face of war is changing. Increasingly, armed groups target civilians and turn cities, towns, and villages into battlefields. Schools and hospitals are left in ruins. Ethnic, sectarian, and political violence tears apart families, communities, and even entire societies. Sadly, children are not spared. In fact, they are often the first casualties of violence. Children are those in the society which tend to uh, suffer the most uh, because uh, they are weaker, because also, one thing one should not forget, children are trusting. And of course, their trust is easily betrayed. Many are forced or recruited to become child soldiers. Girls are especially likely to be abducted, raped, and exploited. I and my friends were distributed to rebel commanders. We were forced to kill those girls who tried to escape or refuse their husbands. I was repeatedly raped by the LRA commander who, on, countless, on countless occasions. I was an innocent girl. I had never known a man in my life. They are forced sometimes to cut the, the, the linkage with the community. The first thing they have to do, they have to go to their community and to do something that will end the sympathy of the community. You have to kill in the community, to rape in the community, sometimes someone from your own family. That's how the commanders ensure that they will not return to the community, they will not flee. Though children show resilience in the face of adversity, in these harsh circumstances, they can find themselves overwhelmed. Orphaned or displaced, and with no one to protect them, they may succumb to deprivations, such as lack of medicine, clean water, food, and shelter. The unseen psychological and emotional traumas of war can be just as devastating and enduring. Haunted by atrocities they've witnessed or were forced to commit, some have difficulty functioning normally in society. Upon returning home, victims of sexual violence may find themselves shunned by their communities and left to fend for themselves. Robbed of their childhoods, many never receive the vocational training needed to become self-sufficient adults. Host governments bear the primary responsibility to protect these children. But when they are unable or unwilling to do so, the world must intervene. It is only recently that the plight of these children has received the attention it deserves. In 1999, the UN Security Council determined that child protection is a primary international peace and security concern. Since then, the Council has taken steps to make sure this concern is addressed in all future peacekeeping operations. Child protection advisors are now routinely deployed to conflict zones. An elaborate monitoring and reporting mechanism was set up to hold violators accountable for their actions and bring justice to victims of the gravest violations. In addition, the Council mandated that all DPKO personnel receive extensive training on child rights and child protection. This training emphasizes their professional obligation to protect children. It outlines the UN's zero tolerance policy regarding misconduct by peacekeepers. And it ensures that everyone becomes familiar with the issues affecting children and how best to deal with these issues. 
Protecting children is a shared responsibility, and every peacekeeper has an important part to play. Military peacekeepers look for and report violations, identify perpetrators, and assist in aiding victims. Their presence on the ground provides the security and stability necessary for normal life to return. One thing is sure is that child, when they meet with peacekeeper, they know that they will create to them no harm. Because when you have peacekeepers somewhere, you have the possibility, in case of crisis, to have soldiers that will be dedicated to your protection, that will do their very best to, to save you if your life is in danger. UN police work within communities and alongside national police to respond to problems affecting children. The mission has several civilian components, and each has its area of expertise. Together, they promote children's rights and child protection issues in the political arena, in the courts, in the communities, and out on the streets. If we are to respond to the enormity of the problems that children encounter in conflict zones, we cannot rely on one person. The contribution of each and every component is vital. Although the Child Protection Advisor is responsible in assisting the mission to mainstream, the responsibility is divided among the mission components. It's divided across the board. It's a collective responsibility. Central to the effort are the Child Protection Advisors. They guide leadership, train those newly deployed to the mission, and ensure that child protection is a priority in the peace process. Most importantly, when any peacekeeper hears about or observes abuses, they know they have the advisor to turn to. All around the world, peacekeepers are making a difference. Hand in hand with UNICEF, NGOs, local governments, and child victims, they work with the perpetrators to end the gravest violations and have negotiated the release of thousands of child soldiers. They assist in resettling them back into their communities, help them to rebuild their lives, and offer real hope for a better future. Most importantly, those who have committed war crimes against children have been tried before the International Criminal Court and found guilty. While the challenge of protecting children is enormous, the rewards are just as immense. When you meet three or four or five children and you talk to them and you engage them at a level that speaks to them as full human beings, part of this incredible world, and that there are opportunities for them. There's nothing more rewarding than like that. Or when you go and you talk to a mother, and the mother explains to you that I'm so happy that my son is coming back. I hope he can go to school and become a productive citizen for his country. There's nothing more rewarding than that. Or when you actually sat down with a former commander or a current commander, and over a period of time, you've engaged with that person to say that recruiting is not in the interest of the army or the nation or he himself. And after a while, he can change his mind and say, you know what, come around, because I want to release this child so that this child can turn the gun towards the pen and start writing. What's more rewarding than that? Former child soldiers, now adults, work on behalf of children in their own communities or as global advocates shining a light on the urgency of the situation. Today's generation of children is tomorrow's generation of adults. The question must be asked, how can peacekeepers expect to bring lasting peace to a country without protecting the children who will inherit that peace, the children who are that country's future? It is absolutely important because when you go there and see the mother, the father that cannot protect their own children and they are looking at you, then you can feel it. 
we are deployed to protect children. It's part of our mandate and it's in the heart of our mandate. So we have to do it and we are accountable and we have to measure our success as a mission if we achieve result in protecting children. That is why child protection must be at the heart of peacekeeping. That is why your role in safeguarding children's rights and preventing their abuse is crucial. And that is why you must choose to act when a child's fate is in your hands.